Armada and Ready Player Armada and Ready Player One, a sci-fi novel done correctly and incorrectly, voiced and written by Alex Chico. Let's look at a timeline to give us some context. Back in 2011, Ready Player One was released. Then, Armada was released in 2015, the Ready Player One movie was released in 2018, and the Armada movie is in production with a release date not announced. The author of Ready Player One and Armada is Ernest Christie Klein. Born March 29, 1972, his inspiration for the novels came from his 70s and 80s childhood. He played video games and watched movies at the time. He was a big fan of Star Wars, John Hughes movies, and the tabletop role-playing game, Dungeons and Dragons. Some of his first dabblings in literature as a whole came from Poetry Slam competitions. He won the 1998 and 2001 Austin Poetry Slam championships, and later compiled his poetry into a chapbook with some of his poems. He's a new-ish novelist. Um, the only novels that he's written so far are Ready Player One, Armada, and the newly released Ready Player Two. Only nine years of writing novels. He's written a handful of screenplays for movies as well, uh, like the movie uh, adaption of Ready Player One, and he dabbled in some smaller projects. All right, Ready Player One. Um, it's time to finally admit which one's the good sci-fi novel and which one isn't. Uh, I prefer Ready Player One. I'll be singing the praises of this book uh, a bit more than an unbiased person should, but I would recommend that you read it over Armada any day of the week. Let's get into a summary. Um, on the... Oh, okay. Uh, that's interesting. On the script here, I put deep Keanu Reeves voice. I, I don't know how to do that. The year is 2045. The world is in a shithole. People escape to a virtual world named the Oasis to avoid reality. Wade Watts, our protagonist, searches for an easter egg and the Oasis, which, if found, will grant him the game creator's fortune and ownership over the Oasis. Alright, pretty cool plot. Alright, next up, hopefully a good plot too. <clears throat> hopefully. Armada. Uh, another warning. I, I, I don't like Armada. Um, I don't prefer Armada. It's it's not terrible. It's not a terrible book. Um, I cannot recommend that you read this book. Uh, Ready Player One to me is this book uh, ten times better. Every aspect it improves on. Um, in every regard, it's a better book. Anyway, a, a summary. Zach Lightman is our protagonist this time, and is one of the top players in a massively multiplayer online game MMO named Armada. This game is actually a fighting simulator made by the government to combat an incoming alien invasion. Yes, that is as crazy as it sounds. First up, the arguably most important part of the novel being the plot. Ready Player One. Its world is really breathtaking. It's a dystopian sci-fi world in the real world, but then you have the opposite, which is the Oasis, and there's some great contrasts that, that gets thrown between those two worlds and a conflict over those two worlds. A, the, the story of Ready Player One. The story of Ready Player One is, is really basic. It could be boiled out to be pretty basic, but a good basic plot allows you to build on that better. Um, it has great, great themes in that story. The world of overall, it, it, it's fleshed out. It's a fleshed out, well thought of world and story. That's what it boils down to. Armada. Its world is bland. Um, you can't blame... Uh, I can't blame him on that one. Um, it's just the real world. And then you have the simulator world, but it's not to the 
the caliber of Ready Player One's Oasis, and it's never brought up of that conflict between the two. The story of Armada is batshit crazy. Uh, of course, I, I knew that before going into the book, but I, I, I was hoping it would be fleshed out more, and it isn't. It isn't. It's thrown into the story, it feels like. It, it feels like a boring, real-world story about a game that aliens were thrown into. It doesn't fit well, I think, with the earlier tones of the book, and doesn't work well. Alright, let's look at the characters. Another arguably most important part of a novel, if your plot's terrible, your characters could probably carry it along. Ready Player One's main character is Wade Watts. He's great. He has a fantastic arc from the beginning to the end, which feels fleshed out. I can fleshed out. And possible. Um, completely changes his character and his outlook on life. Him and all the other side characters are troubled. Some of these troubles are fixed and some aren't. It's realistic how they find solutions to them and sometimes can't find solutions to them. Both Wade and the side characters have an unknown factor to them. Because of the oasis where most of these side characters, these droid side characters, are portrayed, they're unknown. In the Oasis, you can change your avatar to whatever you want. I could be a woman, a guy could be a guy, that would be unknown, but these aspects, it comes into question later in the novel, hey, is this person really who they are? And it's a great added aspect onto the great plot. Armada, on the other hand, well, it's Zack. Zack is a main character. Is not he's not he's not he's not an unlikable terrible no good character. He's just a little bit plain, like the plot. He's a troubled kid. He's he's like the classic bad kid. He's like uh, I I hate everything. It's not terrible. It could have been done a lot lot worse, but it could have been done a lot lot better. The side characters are pretty boring, other than Zach. Um, they have some plot points which come up, but they're not overall that important to the story. Unknown. Well, for Armada, the main characters and side characters don't grow very much. There's no real unknown factor to them. Zack is this no good kid and, well, guess what, by the end he's not a no good kid no more. He's a good kid now. Just like everyone should be, come on. That's just how it goes. Um, it, there's no real depth to that that I think Ready Player One has. And that's where Ready Player One gets an edge on the characters. Alright, next up is Fantasy. That's an odd choice, it sounds like, but they work really well for these two books. Quick credit to E.M. Forrester aspects of the novel for this pick. Switching it up to Armada first, it's out of this world, to a point, literally, it's, it doesn't always take place on Earth, it goes, of course, to the game, but it also goes to the moon. Slight spoiler, but not all that important. It's unrealistic. It, the, the time zone that you're in in Armada doesn't make sense for the technology to exist, number one, to get into the game, and to the moon aspect of the book, it's way too futuristic of an idea. Yes, it's a sci-fi novel, yes, it should be unrealistic, but it should be able to ground the reader. I should be able to be like, alright, well, I mean, this is a sci-fi novel, of course, it's gonna take you out of the book for like, okay, well that's literally impossible. You're out of the moment, it gets in your head, and it's hard to get out. Moving over to Ready Player One, it's out of this world. Oasis, the Oasis 
is everything in the real world is not. It has an infinite amount of possibility, but it's realistic. I mean, think of, go back to the summary, right? It's 2045. It's a far, far away in the future. It makes sense of the world of dystopia. Climate change. Those are aspects that come into the book. It makes sense that the world is how it is. The Oasis could be possible. Rhythm and Flow is next, which again may be the most important. Okay, I'm done. They're all equally important. That's it. Done. Starting with Armada again. It's just a straightforward story. The, it's a straightforward story. It's pretty boring. Especially during the beginning. The most unboring, not boring section is when you are baffled by how quickly the alien invasion is thrust upon you. That's the most un-not boring part of the book. Twists in the book. Well, there's um, the alien invasion. And then, you know, of course, the I am your father moment. Um, it's not poetry. We'll come back to that part later. Ready Player One. It's straightforward. It's a straightforward story. It's not boring. With the Oasis constantly being able to be whatever Klein wants it to be, it's not boring. The twists in the book are great. There's a lot of them. There's not one defining moment. There's twists and turns, but it works really well. This one is poetry. You see the echo of where it's all gonna go. It's like poetry. They rhyme. It's a quote by George Lucas. Included it a little bit for Klein, a little bit for me. But it's all about a flow. If the story flows, it feels good. The plot works with it. it it's a steady step-by-step -step base. Armada doesn't have even steps. Alright, what's the problem with Armada? Compared to Ready Player One, it's not as good as a book. Why? My two main guesses are that one, he was lazy, or, and, or. Having a laziness might have come from Ready Player One being a huge success. After it came out, he might have just not cared anymore and wrote a similar novel to appeal to the same fans. He may have become bored with, you know, a very similar sci-fi novel right after his previous work. Or, he might not be a great writer. I don't think it's this because Raider Player One is great. So I, I know he has the capability. It must be one of those two problems. What's the point of this however minute long video lecture? Well, Klein is, well, can be a good author. The books themselves, Ready Player One is really good. You should read it. It's my recommendation. And lastly, The Order. Now, what I'm about to say, you might get a little upset about, but I think you should read Armada first and then Ready Player One. Now listen, don't go for it, Alex, you said don't read Armada before. Shut up, listen to me now. It's not fantastic, but if you have that base of Armada, you can really see how great Ready Player One is. Going from Ready Player One to Armada isn't a great experience. It's a, it's a worse book. If you go from a worse book to a better book, well hey, you can see improvement. Credits go to Ready Player One and Armada, both by Ernest Klein, and for music, Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. Thanks for watching. Peace.